Hi, Christian. Sorry that this took so long. It's a response to your response. Um, your response to a couple of thought experiments, one of them by Nietzsche, Eternal, eternal Recurrence, where um, you just live your own life forever, uh, living exactly the same life for all eternity. What value would you place on that? Um, and my, or my brother's, thought experiment which I don't, I'm not sure is that much of a thought experiment. It may be, as you pointed out, true There may, in some cases, where your capacity to retain any kind of memory is permanently dislocated. Um, you can't retain any memories, and you can't generate any new ones. Um, it's just you and the present. <laughs> uh, you said that that was disturbing, I guess, um, and impossible to imagine, and it really messes with your head. I suppose uh, such thought experiments are meant to do that. Um, but when you think about it, um, there are those who could, quite understandably, put intense negative value on such states. Um, say, eternal recurrence, or the myth of Sisyphus, um, where you're just doing the same pointless thing for all eternity. Or, um, my thought experiment, where you're stricken with permanent amnesia and the impossibility of retaining new memories, you're not even in a state of futility. You just are. Because <laughs> um, you don't have any notion of past or future. Both have been abolished completely. Now, one could say that both of these states are horrific. Um, I think that some people look at the possibility of these states, even as thought experiments, and they're somehow checkmated by them. They somehow sort of think, this is so horrible, I have no answer to, or, I have no answer to it, and I don't know what to do. So I just curl up in a fetal ball. Um, yeah, I can, I can understand that. Especially when you sort of think about your own powerlessness to do anything about it. Um, but we're already powerless in many ways. Uh, for example, I can't walk across the street and, uh, and lift up uh, the big school that's there. I don't have the capacity to do that. <laughs> I don't have the capacity to um, entice the gorgeous uh, girl that works over there at the uh, bank into my bed tonight. It just isn't going to happen. There's a million impossible things that I'm faced with every single day of my existence. And somehow, though, these things don't bother me terribly. Um, I'm not bothered by the impossibility of all the things that I will never do. I love the idea that I might fly. I, what a wonderful feeling. Never going to do that. I'm stuck here on the ground forever. What do I make of that? What do I make about impossibilities? Uh, for example, the impossibility if you're in, <clears throat> if you're in, say, Nietzsche's eternal recurrence, the impossibility of getting out of that loop that you're constantly reliving the same life. What do you make of that? I can imagine eventually you'd start to see it as just as impossible as flying. You just say, well, this is just the way it is. There is no why. There is no, um, there is no explanation. It just that's the way that things have been ordered. Um, now, again, I think that a lot of people are sort of, when you look at, say, impossibilities, when you look at things that are unattainable, when you look at, um, problems that you have that are intractable and you, it looks as though you're simply going to have to endure them for as long as you're alive. Um, there's two possible reactions. You can accept them or you can rebel against the impossible. Now, I think that when you rebel against the impossible, uh, that's where the problem starts. There's um, a video that I hesitate to link to, but I think I'm going to by Evelis Anihilis Uls, I hope I've pronounced that correctly, where once again I'm essentially called pure evil. 
Now, rather than get offended by this, I tend to get fascinated because I tend to think that these people mean it, um, that they see me as that evil. Now, let's say that um, this individual does believe that I'm pure evil because of what I'm doing. Okay, maybe I'm sort of enabling this impossibility. Maybe I'm enabling the horror of existence. Maybe I'm enabling um, the, the Sisyphean existence that we're in. Um, maybe my rhetoric is dangerous in that it's um, keeping the wheel of existence turning, keeping the wheel of existence in existence. Um, maybe my insistence upon um, ordering my personal life in a certain way is enabling all the evils of Pandora's box to continue to exist. Now, I can understand that, uh, why someone would see me that way, if you accept these givens. That what is in Pandora's box cannot be either coped with or defeated. That's the dark side, isn't it? We live in a cultural matrix in which we believe that one side or the other has to prevail, dark or light. And if you've reached the conclusion that light cannot re uh, prevail over darkness or good cannot prevail over evil, or however you want to phrase your metaphor, um, anyone who is holding out the idea that... Um, the dark side might not be quite as dark as you think it is, is going to be seen as pure evil. Um, because I guess that the, the, the thinking is that the dark side, if you can't um, destroy the dark side, then you destroy the universe that contains the dark side. Um, or something along those lines. Or you, can, you, you destroy the whole vessel that contains both that which is good and that which is opposite of good, evil, I don't know, in the world. What do we do about the unpleasant facts of life that seem to be invincible? Um, the unfortunate fact of life does seem to be that the ugliness, the warts, the horrors, and everything of life are invincible. Try as we might, we will never get rid of them. Um... And yet we still believe that we have the imperative to try to defeat them. You know, this, these horrible, horrible, paradoxical and potentially hellish statements like, in order for evil to triumph, it's only necessary for good men to do nothing. Now, the, the, I cannot express to you how horrific I find that statement. Um... Because it's basically saying nothing is complicity. If you're not for us, you're against us type thing. Um, in other words, there's only us or them. There's only two sides that have to be antagonistic, good and evil, darkness and light. Um, over there in that cave is a horrific monster that we've somehow managed to lock up. He's called All the Ills of the World. He's called sin, he's called evil, he's called terror, he's called panic, he's called all those other things. And we've got him locked in that cage. But we've got to watch him constantly, or else he'll get out and run amok. Um, we can't kill him, it's impossible. He seems invincible. Um, but he's just so scary, we don't dare go near him, and we don't know what to do but keep him penned up in there. Sort of a caricature of the tale of Mordor, where they didn't know what to do with Sauron, so they just locked him up in Mordor and decided to pen him up, but they, you know, eventually he got out, and well, we all know what happened in The Lord of the Rings. Um, I guess, if you accept the inevitability of the dark side, the invincibility of suffering horror, terror, pain, agony, uh, all the negative states imaginable, 
you really only have two options. You can succumb. You can say, okay, you win, dark side, and you become something of a Thomas Ligotti, where the dark side is simply too big. It's too strong. And there is an impetus towards destroying it, or defeating it permanently, or at least a belief maybe that we can't defeat it, but it must be defeated. That sort of Manichaean dark light split in the world. Or you can say, that's merely our shadow, and you can't run from your shadow. <laughs> and that going over and talking to that beast might be your only way out, and finding out how it works, what motivates it, what um, what it's all about, how it sees the world, how it sees the light side of things. Um, you must learn to, I guess, look into the dark side and not be afraid. Not be afraid that it's going to somehow corrupt you and turn you into Charles Manson or something, because it does look as though some people, you know, the, the Charles Mansons of this world, have, in a sense, dabbled with this kind of thing and have been overcome by it. Have been overcome by the dark side. That is a danger, of course. Um, <clears throat> nobody said that this reconciliation of the two halves of one's character is going to be easy or um, harmless or not fraught with danger. Uh, it still might be something you have to do regardless. Um, and at the end of the day, what's the worst thing that the dark side can do? Um, Evelis Anihilus Ulse's video sort of looks a bit weird at the beginning, but it kind of peters out like all these horrific things do. In a somewhat yawnish kind of ennui, which I, I ended up sort of, you know, horror, horror literature always does that to me. You're scared all through it, through it all, and then suddenly when you're faced with that which you actually fear the most, the, the fear just vanishes and you go, well, that's kind of pathetic, isn't it? And I'm not, not criticizing his video for that. It's just... You're only afraid of that which you can't actually see, and that which you dread or anticipate as coming. And I think a lot of people that have been checked or checkmated by fear of the void can no longer even consider thinking about it, even though the, the thoughts are constantly um, tearing at the back of their mind. Uh, you know, like I just said, you can't um, run from your own shadow. So you try and abolish your shadow, and your shadow will follow you. No matter what. You turn around, there it is. And <clears throat> you you try not to look at it, but it follows you. So you try to look at it, and then it scares the living hell out of you. What do you do in a case like that? The dark side. It won't go away, no matter how hard you try to run from it. Say, leave me alone, and I'll leave you alone. How about that? And the dark side says, no, I'm sorry, I can't. I'm the void, I'm the horror of existence, and you'll just have to deal with me. Um, dealing with the dark side. Dealing with that which we are horrified by. Dealing with the fact that you cannot eradicate that. I tend to look at it this way, and I guess this is just a little teaser. Um, even if the pit of horror at the center of existence is there, is that all that, that's there? 